of the Continental and, and, and all of us for, for ages, it's really all about good business and getting more efficient. So that's natural. But today we're talking about a new opportunity. Uh, and I don't know if you can feel it, but from where I am, I can feel we're at a, a rotation point. We've been accelerating down this runway on this new opportunity to, to provide sustainable biofuel that can lower emissions, uh, provide economic benefits, provide energy security benefits, and we're, we're now really at what I sense is a rotation point. We're about ready to, to lift off to the next stage, and uh, that's really exciting. I think it's historic, um, and I want to, you know, the Boeing approach to this, I think, is embodied in, uh, if I can paraphrase uh, our founder, uh, this is about 100 years ago, he said, let no innovation pass us by, and that's really what we're about. We're finding those innovations and moving forward, in this case, for the things I mentioned. Um, I also want to acknowledge that besides uh, the partners that have been named, uh, there are a lot of other people that helped. A lot of other organizations that have uh, done everything from moral support to test work to, um, to uh, figuring out next steps. And uh, from uh, US Air Force, MIT, Yale, FAA, Commercial Aviation Fuel Initiative, Air Transport Association, NRDC, and I'm sure I've left out many, but this is a collaborative effort, uh, and we're all doing our part to move this forward. Now, it's good news for the public, it's good news for the industry, it's good news for people that use air services for, for travel, for commerce, for cargo, uh, and we're creating a better future. That's what, what we think we're doing. Um, I'm very proud to be here um, on behalf of Boeing and uh, to work with the people on the stage and, uh, and the rest of the industry. So thank you for being here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, partners and friends. As a jet engine manufacturer, we believe that we have a responsibility to design and build engines that produce the lowest possible emissions and provide the best possible fuel consumption. At CFM, we take that responsibility, that environmental responsibility, very seriously and have adopted a three-pronged approach to tackling this major issue. First, short-term contributions through technology upgrades to improve the environmental performance of the current generation of engines. Second, the development of new engines that are being designed to meet aggressive emissions, noise, and fuel consumption target. And third, this is the reason we are here today, support the development of sustainable biofuels for aviation. It is something that we view as a natural and important extension of our engine technology development programs. This is why we, have ver we are very proud to be part of today's demonstration, along with Continental, Boeing, and Honeywell UOP. It's a significant step towards achieving our common goal, and clearly, and it's very important, it invents that teamwork in that area is absolutely essential. In the past two years, CFM has conducted three separate ground tests with biofuels for a total of just over 40 hours. The first two, completed in 2009, involved an ester-type biofuel, what we consider to be the first generation of biofuels. These tests were a first step that showed the technical feasibility with current engine technology. However, those fuel didn't meet our criteria for environmental sustainability. Last November, we conducted a third ground test in preparation for today's flight. And what we have found is that the second generation fuel that being tested today comes very close to simulating the characteristic of traditional jet fuels in terms of engine performance, operability, characteristics such as fuel consumption, engine start, and other parameters. 
and this was rightly qualified as a drop-in fuel <coughs> by Larry. We have also found that engines running with this mix emit less smoke even than those fueled by traditional jet fuel. These results have given us full confidence for today's demonstration, and we look forward to learning more about the capabilities and potential of this fuel mix through today's flight demo. We still have plenty of work to do in terms of testing the various biofuels that are being tested from various bi biostock experimented today. But we are very pleased and encouraged by the results we have seen today. In the face of the environmental challenges that we are collectively facing, we are very proud to be part of a responsible industry with great partners like Continental, Boeing, and Honeywell Europe. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> it's a tremendous pleasure to be here. I, I was going to start by thanking you all for coming and sharing this day with us. And then I quickly realized, talking to you this morning, that you're not sharing the day with us. We're all sharing the day together. I think we're united by a common vision that to meet the growth in, in the, the energy growth, that what we have to do is bring alternatives into the transportation pool. However, I think we also would all agree that to meet that goal, we have to have some key criteria that these new alternative fuels are going to have to meet. First of all, they have to be drop-in replacement. The global economy can't possibly afford to rebuild its infrastructure. That means distribution networks, and that means fleets. And the second critical criteria is that all of these new fuels must be sustainable. And by sustainability, I always try to think of the three criteria environmental, social, and economic. And it's only by meeting these two criteria that we will really be successful in bringing alternatives into the transportation pool. Having said that, and the reason we're all here today is because a really cool thing is gonna happen. That plane actually is filled um, with um, a fuel that actually does meet these two criteria. It is a drop-in replacement, and it's been made with sustainable feedstocks. The sustainable feedstocks were brought to us by Terrasol, it's a Jatropa, and by Sapphire, the algae oil. These are two very important feedstocks in my mind, not only because they're sustainable, but because they show us the, the path, the journey. Jatropa is something that could have an impact in the next three to five years in the hundreds of millions of gallons, and um, algae is something that could have an impact in the next 10 to 15 years in the billions of gallons. So they really represent the path that we're all jointly on. The one thing I should also say something about is the process. The process that we've been developing and the process that we're commercializing is a process that enables us to use a variety of feedstocks to make these drop-in replacement fuels. Um, what's important about it, I think, and the thing that I have not addressed is the economics, that third pillar of sustainability. After 100 years in the refining industry, the one thing we know how to do is to make process economics work. This process actually, from an, a CapEx perspective, is very similar to refining technology of today. And from an operating cost perspective, as long as the feedstock, which is 85% of the cost of production, is on par with petroleum, it's actually economically competitive uh, on that basis as well. I need to also acknowledge not only the team that's here, but also the broader team. This is, I would say, the commercial team, but we also had a tremendous amount of support from the government. This actually was a DARPA-led program initially, and um, we had a lot of support from the Air Force in the form of AFRL. Anyways, I started by saying we're here because we have a shared vision. The problem with visions is that sometimes they're simply hallucinations. And I think that the reason that we can get there from here is because we are all working together. And at the end of the day, we all believe, or at least I think we do, that in the next three to five years, we will see commercial flights with all of us on them that actually have biofuels on board. Thanks for your attention.